Good morning everyone, it's Brenda Quintana here and today I'm going to be showing you a fancy fold card and I love this card because it is easy to make and it still has a lot of wow factor so that's when I look for a card sometimes it's really cool to have a really wow card with lots of different layers and stuff but What's even more wow if it's an easy wow that you can reproduce really easily. And um, I have created a project sheet as normal um, for my more complex 3D projects and uh, fancy folds. And if you would like this project sheet, just make sure that you are on my mailing list. If you're already on there, no worries. This um, project sheet will be mailed out on Saturday. If you'd like to be on my mailing list and you haven't already joined, just check down below in the description of the video, go down below. Um, you might have to click on see more and um, jump on there. The other thing I forgot to do, I just realized what I forgot to do this morning is um, I usually, before I go live, I update my link that goes um, to my blog post and um, I will do that right after I finish this video. So if you click on, or if you look at it right now, it will say coming soon, but I have also like a kind of a landing page, so to speak. And on that landing page, it has a link to the supply list and it's a clickable supply list. So it's really good for anyone that you know just wants to click and look at what supplies that they need and see if they need them or can substitute them. All right, I have a few of you on here this morning. Good morning, good morning. Um, and oh, there's someone here from Tennessee. I hope you weren't affected by the tornadoes. Or I hope no one that you knew were affected by the tornadoes. Maybe you can let me know if you're, if you and your family are okay down below. Um, I used to live in Tennessee for 12 years um, in the Memphis area. I know this um, tornado hit in the Nashville area. Um, so uh, I kind of have a special, a soft spot on my heart for Tennessee. As you can see, probably in the background, you can see my little Canada flag. That used to be, it's um, my license plate. I used to have that on my car in Tennessee or my van. Um, but um, in the Tennessee, we didn't have um, plates. Um, like we didn't have front plates. So I could put that on the front of my car. In Massachusetts, where I live now, we have both front and back plates, so um, that ended up on my wall instead of um, uh, on my car. Um, and I hope uh, down the road, I'm I'm working on getting my U.S. citizenship because I, you know, we've lived now in the U.S. not quite 20 years, but um, so I'm working on that right now. So um, maybe once I have my U.S. citizenship, I'll add my little US flag up there too so you can see both of them together okay I have blabbed a lot already so I'm sure you want to see what I'm actually here for or what you actually came to see is my card and um, maybe the best way to show this is when it's um, flat or um, facing downward so let me just switch my cameras right now all right let me stick my project sheet aside I'm gonna follow along so hopefully I do things in the order of the project sheet. So if you're doing this card later, then you just need to find a spot to prop it up. Okay, so here's the card. And I just wanted to grab an envelope real quick to show you something. Sorry, I totally forgot that I was going to do that. So Stampin' Up, our cards are kind of based on a half sheet of cardstock. So we have envelopes and we call these medium envelopes and they fit a quarter card. So a regular card, let me grab one that I did this week. So a regular card, you know, is just a half sheet of cardstock that is folded in half like that. But this card has some extra folds, but it still will fit inside a medium envelope. So let me just shove that in there. See, it still fits right inside. But when you pop this out, it's going to have a lot of spring to it just because of the way the folds are. And so it's really cool um, that 
um, this will sit up like this. And you know what I did not do? And I, I, I will cut a back panel for this. But I need a back panel for this. And that is where you will write your message on that back space right there. So I, even though this card looks really, really big, it actually fits inside a medium envelope by design. Okay. The other thing I want to mention is I'm using this beautiful new stamp set called Tags in Bloom. This is a celebration stamp set that can only be earned with a purchase of a hundred dollars. Um, and, um, you, um, you can select it. There's other choices as well. Um, but if you're creating this card, I mean, this whole setup looks beautiful and lovely, but this fold still can be done with other stamp sets as well. So don't feel if you don't have the stamp set that you can't create a card like this. Um, but this center piece right here is all created with this stamp set and, um, it matches. Let me just show you real quick. It matches the Label Me Lovely Punch, which is a new punch that we have in our mini catalog right now. Okay, and then the other stamp set I'm using is Breathtaking Bouquet. And I thought this would look really cool on the side panels because it has maybe not exactly identical florals, but it has a floral that you know kind of really matches up well with the floral from the tags and bloom stamp set and this is just a gorgeous background stamp it is a large stamp so it's larger than even what is pictured here it's designed to go on a card front so it's a little bit larger than your standard card front which would be Standard card print is four and a quarter by five and a half. It's just really pretty. And you could stamp this and take your time coloring it all. But I kept my design very simple just by doing um, a tone on tone stamping. All right, I think I have discussed everything that I wanted to discuss. So let's start off first with the card base because that's probably the most important part of this card. And I like to use my scoring board to score this. So we're gonna start off with a piece of cardstock that measures 11 inches by four and a quarter inches. And then we're going to make four score marks. Make sure I have my measurements right here. We're gonna score at the two and a quarter inch mark, the three and five eighths inch mark, the seven and three eighths inch mark and the eight and three quarter inch mark. So pretty easy peasy. Four scores. And then I'm gonna take my bone folder and fold this piece along the score line. So first we're gonna fold up this bottom piece use my bone folder to smooth it down. Let me turn the other side and do the same thing because it's basically just mimicking side by side. Fold those over like that and then let's unfold. And then we're going to fold this back. So I'm gonna turn this around and we're gonna fold this one back too. And even if you fold this the wrong way, in the end, this is what it's going to look like. And you know, every time I do this, it looks like it's like shorter for some reason than the five and a half inch, but it's, it's the same. It's like, I just, like, it just always like freaks me out. Like it's not the right measurements, but they are. Okay, so let's do the side panel now. That's the card base, very simple, huh? And I'm going to use a piece of four inch by four inch piece of uh, purple posy. I'm going to need a, a scrap piece of paper because um, the stamp's a little bit larger and I'm going to end up on my work surface. So I'll grab my big background stamp and the gorgeous grape ink pad. And I'm going to tap, tap, tap on here. now. If you have our new ink pads, I just want to give you a little tip. Um, they are a little bit tight when you first get them. So um, I, I saw this tip from another demonstrator. I just take, I have, I had an old chapstick and I just use my finger and I dab it in the chapstick and I just put it just along that 
plastic edges of the sides of this ink pad right here and that just that little bit just allows the ink pad to no longer be like so tight so it just opens up very easily so if you have any of your ink pads that are kind of stubborn like that um, that will help a lot I haven't mentioned that before but it's a really good idea okay so then I'm just going to tap 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 all over my big stamp and um, it's a good idea to it's a big stamp so you want to make sure you get good coverage and then I'm going to stand up to do this grab this and I'm just going to hover this over top I'm just going to make sure that my little square is somewhere in the center right there and then I'm just going to use the heels of my hand to kind of just you know give it some pressure Give it a chance for the ink to contact the cardstock and then lift off and there is my beautiful piece already stamped now i forgot to grab my trimmer which i normally don't use my trimmer i usually cut up all my pieces but i figured i could stamp both of these panels separately but it's easier to have the big piece cut it in half and then you don't have to stamp twice so i'm just going to cut this at the two inch mark this is our new uh, trimmer that we got a few months ago just line it up with a two inch mark then bring this down um, I love this trimmer um, just make sure you don't press super hard because you don't need to um, you just let it slide and glide it cuts really beautifully so now I have two panels that are two by four inches so if you're creating panels out of designer series paper just remember two by four inches is what you want for these little side panels and then we'll take some Tombow and Oh, I, I'll do it reverse this time because on my other one, I had the rose on the one side and uh, I'm trying to decide. Yeah, that still looks good having the rose on that side. And then we'll put this flower over here. So you just want to center it within the score piece and bring it down. And then this one. And okay, so side panels are done, and now we just need to work on our front panel. Okay, so this little piece on the front measures two and three quarters by three and a quarter inches and I'm actually only using one color of ink on this entire piece so that's kind of cool um, gorgeous grape comes out again and tap 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 I'm just going to make sure that's all inked up and then I'm going to just center this on here sure have a good stamped image and then since we have the ink pad out already I have a scrap piece of whisper white and I'm going to stamp that little dotted frame make sure when you stamp um, I have my punch I hope I hope this will reach it might not reach but if it doesn't I'm going to show you a little trick so I just want to kind of stamp it the way my punch is going. So I'll have that curved side up to the top. So let me just stamp this. This is the little dotted frame. So let me just add that here. Don't smush down too hard because if you smush hard on this, the dotted part might not stamp 100% correctly. And then I'm going to use that greeting from the same stamp set called Wishing You the Best. And I'll just stand and make sure that it's centered. Okay. 
All right, now I can close this up, put it away. So let me see if this actually reaches. Okay, it does reach. Okay, but I'm gonna show you a little trick. See, say your thing did not reach. Let me grab a post-it note. So say you had trouble, like say you, say you had actually made this a lot smaller. We can make that a lot smaller. I'll just show you what I mean. So let's cut this a little smaller. And like now you're like, oh shoot, how am I going to like get this inside the punch? It's gonna be like impossible to center it. So what you can do is take a little post-it note and you're going to stick your piece on the little post-it note. Now you have a handle for it. Now if you're clever, you can move it right kind of to the edge and that way you can reuse your post-it note over and over again if you have several to stamp. Um, so you just use it as a handle and then you find your centering point and then punch and see? My, actually, my post-it note is completely whole still, so I can keep punching with it or use it for something else. So that's kind of cool, right? So that's how I would do it. Um, I, I do that all the time. Sometimes I forget to um, leave myself a little bit of room. Okay, now you can use the stamp set to actually stamp the florals and the center and um, the leaves, but... I have a lot of my blocks right now. I've got a lot of projects on the go and I decided I was going to color instead of stamping them. You do whatever makes you happy. I'm using my Stampin' Blends Purple Posy Dark and I'm just going to color in this little floral. It's such a pretty color. I love Purple Posy. And then this little blossom here is also in Purple Posy. Okay, and then I'm going to do the center of the flower in Pineapple Punch Dark. And Pineapple Punch is an in color that is retiring. So if you like Pineapple Punch and you want the Stampin' Blend, um, get it now because it will sell out and then you won't be able to get it anymore. It's a nice bright sunshiny yellow I love it and then I'm going to use granny apple green dark to color the leaves and even though this is a purple ink it's so dark it it looks just fine when you color it in and you always want to stamp in water-based inks when you're using stamp of blends so you can stamp in any of our um, regular colored ink and use blends with them. So I just love that. The most popular color to use is actually uh, Tuxedo Black. But look, doesn't that look great? And I just took a few seconds to do that. Nice, bright, vibrant colors. Okay, so now I have all my pieces. But before I add the front, it's much easier I find to tie this on first because I think this might be shifted a little bit more to this side than that side so I just want to make sure that I get this tied on correctly first and this is the tri-color purple ribbon it is gorgeous I love it and I haven't used it enough and that's a shame um, it works really well with this card with all the purples in it, right? It's This is a purple happy card. And um, if you're just cutting lengths of ribbon to use with this card, about a 14 inch length would work. And I'm trying to keep my dark stripe all the way to the left. I'm gonna use some locking tweezers to clamp down. And then I'm going to tie a little knot. Oh, so pretty. Um, the nice thing about this tricolor ribbon, it ties so nicely. You know, there are certain ribbons that I just love because they tie really nicely. 
And there's other ribbons that I will avoid because I don't like the way that they tie. And this one is just very pleasant. It makes me happy when I'm sitting there tying it. Okay, so then we're going to take this piece right here. Add it to the front. Slide it into place. And with the glue, you have a few seconds to kind of shift it how you want it. It's a little bit crooked. Okay, I think that's good. And then, where did my dimensionals go? Oops, here they are. Just grab a few dimensionals to stick on the back. And then we'll just remove these. And don't let me forget, I want to cut a panel for the back. I'm going to have to run across the room to go do that because all my card stocks across the room. So then I'm just going to center this on here. And this is one of the things you can't really see on my card but I love the way this punch shape gives, it's got a little bit of dimension with the dimensionals on this little stitched frame. So it just builds it up, a little detail that you can't really see from the photo. Um, let me go grab a back panel for this. I need a three and a half by four inch panel. Run across the room. So then you just flip this over and I'm going to add this piece to the back. You could stamp something on it too, like maybe a little flower in the corner because there's a bunch of little flowers in the Tags and Bloom stamp set, or at least there's a couple of flowers. I shouldn't say there's a ton. I should, probably should have stuck this on before I added the ribbon. That would be a good idea. But there, that's not too bad. Okay, so now I have a back panel and that is where I would write my greeting and then you can um, uh, just, you know, close this up. You will see a bit of the greeting on the back, but it is just such a wonderful card. I love the card because it's not hard to make. So many times we have hard to make cards and it's nice to have a fancy fold that is a little bit easier to make because sometimes we need a card in a hurry, right? Like we don't always have the luxury of time. And so it's nice to have a card that we can just like whip up relatively quickly. It doesn't have a lot of fancy cutting. It's just a regular card base that has some extra score marks to it. So it's nice to have that. Look, I kind of match. This is kind of, it's kind of like, um, uh, blue top but it looks purple next to my purple card it looks like I did this on purpose so yay yay for me for all my color turtlenecks um, that I wear all winter long because I don't like to be cold let me check and see if there are any questions on the comments um, oh good morning Amy I'm so glad you're here um, someone said that um, Purple has always been her favorite color. Oh, um, that's really cool. Oh, so someone asks, does the new trimmer use blades as fast as the old trimmer did? Um, so I use more than one trimmer in my craft room. Um, so I, I guess I wouldn't be able to speak directly to that. Um, the one thing that this new trimmer has though, um, and um, they say that it should not, but I'm going to see if I can pull off my little blade. You don't pull them off very often, so give me a second. There's my little spot to pull it off. Okay, I think it's going to... All right. I don't know if I can pull this up. Yeah, okay, maybe you can see it. 
So if you look at this blade, it is a lot deeper than our old blades and it's got more of a cutting surface. And um, the one thing you do not want to do with this is press down very hard because you don't want the top of this blade to hit the bottom of the um, um, groove, which with the old trimmer, I think as our blades dulled, we tended to press harder to get them to cut. So, so far I have found that this trimmer has been a lot better in terms of nice, smooth cuts. Um, you just need to slide and glide it. So I like this trimmer better than the old one. I can definitely say that. Um, these blades will be a lot easier to get. Um, so that that is the nice thing um, about these ones. The other ones for our other trimmer were very exclusive to the trimmer um, itself, and we couldn't we couldn't find anyone that would was willing to manufacture them anymore. So that was one of the big problems. So um, I, I do like the new cutter. I probably don't use it as much as the average person does. Um, I have a, um, a cutter that I got years ago. It's a very precision cutter that you cannot get anymore. And um, so I have used that, that cutter for years and years. Um, so that that is what I mainly use, but for fancy folds, you need a cutter like this. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of fancy folds lately because we haven't had a cutter. This one has both a cutting and a scoring blade. And um, what you need it sometimes for is for those intermediate cuts. So when we cut, you know, when we have measurements along here, um, there's also a ruler right here so we can say, okay, I need you to cut to the from the one inch to the four and a half inch mark. So you can do inner cuts. So if you love fancy folds, you will need a trimmer like this. So I don't know if that answered your question. I just want to be honest with you that I probably don't use mine as much as the average person. From those people that have been using them, I have not um, heard bad things um, or like murmurs or things like that um, uh, about this trimmer like I did about the old trimmer. So hopefully so far so good. We've only had this one, um, let's see, it came out just recently for customers. So we've only had it like I think about three or four months. So I don't know if that um, gives us enough time to like really, you know, really save what everything is. but. It is $5 cheaper than the old trimmer, and you can get trimmer blades for it right now, so that's yay. Okay, um, so let me see if there's anything else. Good morning. Someone's here from the Netherlands. How nice. Um, well, thank you so much. I'm so glad you like my card, and I just wanted to point out, if you order from me, I so appreciate your orders because this is... Um, my job, I, I work full time at being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Um, I was a librarian in a former life before my um, son um, came along. And now that he's off in college, I made the decision to keep going as a full time demonstrator, um, even though I probably could get back into my other profession. Um, so I really appreciate uh, when you order for me, when you support me, when you follow me, um, because this is my job. Now this month, um, if you do order from me, I just wanted to show you one of the tutorials you could choose. This is my new one. This is my Rolo's Butterfly um, tutorial. And I, if you know me at all, you'll know that I create a whole bunch of different um, tutorials that use candy. And um, some that don't, I have a whole bunch of other tutorials as well that are like boxes and um, note card holders and all of that. But this is my latest one and you can choose this one or you can choose any of my other ones. I have over 70 tutorials to choose from, but I just thought this one's kind of a fun one coming into um, spring and I have a purple butterfly for 
person who uh, loved purple. Um, I feel like I'm having like a real purple day today, so I grabbed my purple butterfly. And I found um, these Rolos. I found spring Rolos. So they're, I found Rolos that are in five different colored foils. So you can um, use a brights pack of the designer series paper. I don't know if you can see on the side, you can see the little pattern. Um, and um, so yeah, you can use the Brights Designer Series paper and um, to create these little little guys, and then it will match your rolls if you can find the spring rolls. If you can't find the spring rolls, no worries. Have all your butterflies be different colors, and then just put the gold rolls in, and it will still look beautiful. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, and I hope that you liked this. Um, uh, new fancy fold um, probably isn't new I worked out the measurements um, myself in my head I had seen a slightly different fold on the on the um, other side like um, it was a portrait size card I was like oh that would be really cool in a um, in a landscape mode so I just sat there and I like okay this is how big I want the front to be and I, I worked out the measurements because I, I I'm I do that. Um, I don't know, maybe someone else has done this exact same measurements or, or whatever before, but I don't know because I just worked it out myself. Um, so I don't even know what to call the fold other than it's an easy fancy fold and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a great rest of the week. Take care guys. Bye-bye.